On this week's show, Chisholm Logu brings us the second of our three-part series on Black History Month. Adil Weaver gives us an exclusive, behind-the-scenes look at the final dress rehearsal for the Broadway Cabaret. Kobe Achenpong brings us an update from the girls' varsity squash team, and Annie Haight joins the school's newly formed competitive rock climbing team for a practice. Lawrenceville's 10-minute newscast begins right now. From our studios inside the Lawrenceville School's historic Pop Hall, this is L10 with Guy L. Fogues. Hello and welcome to this week's show. The girls and boys varsity basketball teams traveled to Mercersburg Academy last weekend to compete in the 2017 Mid-Atlantic Prep League Basketball Tournament. The boys team lost to Hun 52-59 in the first round, but defeated Mercersburg in the second 77-59. While losing again to Blair 40-84 in the first round, the girls team continued on to defeat Hun 67-51. In celebration of the Black of Black History Month, the Black Women at Lawrenceville Club invited Poetry Grand Slam champion Portia O for Spoken Word Night on February 12th. Hello, my name is Portia Olaiwola. I go by Portia O. I'm from Chicago's most southern side by way of Boston. That's where I live and I teach and I organize and I do poetry and spoken word and slam poetry and my style is kind of like ah no um, <laughs> but my style is like I think in your face people would describe it as in your face um, it's a little abrupt if you will so I do weird poems I try to keep people out as best I can um, and then I just try to be true try like true to myself and true to my people Spoken word poet Joe Cox came to Lawrenceville earlier this week, attending classes and holding a poetry reading. Cox is a 30-year career army officer who retired with the rank of colonel. He is a tenured English professor at West Point and a former headmaster of the Haverford School. On Wednesday, Lawrenceville launched its new website, designed to better reflect the school and its mission. The website has a fresher and more easily navigable design and includes more details about Lawrenceville life. 11 fifth formers have been chosen as the 2017 National Merit Scholarship finalists. Alexander Campbell, Sidney Friedland, Matthew Kim, Brian Lee, Michael Mann, Giannis Vandries, Panos Vandries, Ricky Williams, Kathy Wu, Jay Yellowman Chili, and Michael Zhao. Of the 1.6 million students who take the preliminary SAT, the qualifying exam for the merit scholarships, only 1,500 are selected as finalists. Uh, approximately half of the finalists will receive scholarships. On Saturday, Lauren Soul's Boys and Girls Varsity Track Team celebrated Senior Day at the team's final home meet. Lawrenceville won the meet with a large margin against Union Catholic and Lenape, Captains Michael Troop and Angel Muhammad, as well as juniors Jefferson Mott and, My and Meinhardt Rentrup, members of the boys 4x400 team, ranked 8th in the state and qualified for New Balance Nationals. Ariel Claxton, Tess Maloney, Amy Araguzzo, and Brace Faircloth ran in the 4x400 as well and ranked 3rd in the state and qualified for indoor track and field nationals. Now, with the second of our three-part series on Black History Month, our executive producer Chisholm Logu sat down with current visual arts fellow and Lawrenceville class of 2011 graduate Stuart Robertson for his perspective on Lawrenceville life as a fellow and as a former student. So Mr. Robertson, you came to Lawrenceville as a new sophomore in the fall of 2008. But what was it like coming to Lawrenceville as a black international student from Jamaica? Well, first of all, I came as a Jamaican student. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the black portion of it didn't come into play until maybe later on, once I started to identify with different people on campus. Mm -hmm. You know, the nature of the conversations I had as a student just wasn't as um, critical and it just wasn't as overwhelming mm -hmm. as the experience a lot of you have now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for us it was more about social culture and um, kind of dealing with stereotypes to, to a certain extent, but not so much, not so much in such a, in a heavy politically charged context as it is now. Um, definitely didn't have the same conversations about violence, um, didn't have the same conversations about identity. It was just more about how do we function here? How do we make sure that we don't give a bad name to the community yeah. and then also do well, you know? So it, it was a lot more, I don't wanna say surface level, but it was just a, it was a lot less about the conversations and more about just living here and being black at the same time. So after attending Davidson, you decided to come back to Lawrenceville to teach as an art master. What made you make that decision? First of all, relationships. Mm -hmm. So if Lawrenceville taught me anything, it's make a few good friends, keep them close, stay in touch. So um, actually, Jamie Greenfield, who was my former um, art teacher here, and Dean Eldridge, who coached me um, soccer 
uh, I just had been in contact with them for a long time, started to have more and more conversations about this opportunity. And I realized that I'd always said, whenever I got to the stage of being able to donate significant sums of money, Lawrence would be one of the first places I came to because of the opportunities they provide for other students, especially students of color, students from the Caribbean, international students. Um, and so I figured, you know, what better way than to actually be in the classroom and teaching. Do you think Lawrenceville has changed a lot from when you attended as a student to now? Oh yeah, it's, I mean, it's always changing. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be disappointed if it wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, as far as um, black teachers, black students, there are a lot more black students now, um, which is a good thing. I think we're approaching a, a point where students can kind of walk around on campus and not feel weird um, about counting black faces. Right? It's, I haven't had to since I've been back, which is, I think is a positive. It's unfortunate for the school that the conversations are intensifying and they're heating up as you're getting more students who need to have these conversations, right? So it would have been nicer for them, I think, if, if we could have had the time to learn how to have those conversations, learn how to facilitate them, and then have more students coming in. But the intensity and the, the volume sort of makes it a lot more difficult to handle. And so I think that's where we need some work. Thank you, Chisholm. Earlier this evening, the Allegro Council hosted the annual Broadway Cabaret, where students sang songs featured in Broadway productions to raise money for the Lawrenceville Performing Arts Camp. We had a chance to film part of the final dress rehearsal last night, and here is a performance by four former Emily Lee. For my memories, all are exciting. My memories, all are enchanting. My memories burn in my head with a steady glow. So if my friends, if love is dead, I don't. The Lawrenceville girls varsity squash team has been exceptional this year and is currently ranked seventh in the nation. Our sports reporter Kobe Achimpong brings us a feature on the team as they prepare for the Mid-Atlantic Prep League tournament this weekend. I got a chance to get a behind the scenes look at girls varsity squash practice as they prepare to defend their undefeated streak at the Maple Championships. Guys, as captains, what have you tried to impact upon the team? Well, this year we definitely tried to explain to the girls that it doesn't matter how you do on court, it's what you bring on and how good of a sport you are. And yeah, I've definitely tried to emphasize work ethic. Um, and it's easy to kind of half do your work during practice. Um, but I've tried to emphasize that like completely trying and putting 100% into practice is what translates into matches. Um, so yeah, just work ethic and trying your best all the time is really important. What are you going to miss most being a senior? Um, yeah, it's definitely really sad that I'm leaving. I've been on the team for four years, so I've gotten to know a lot of the girls throughout the past years, and definitely I've been with the coaches since day one, so that's really sad. But um, definitely the team dynamic, because a lot of other day schools that have squash teams kind of have their individual coaches um, after school practice, but we are 100% a team all the time. I'm here with girls' varsity squash coach, Coach Krizak. Coach, what have you tried to instill upon the players this season? 
Uh, we're a really young team, so the biggest philosophy we have is work ethic, um, making sure the girls try really hard all the time in practice. And one of the other biggest things is with challenge matches, uh, we're a team, we compete on court hard, but when we come off the court, we're a team and everybody cares about each other. It's not just an individual sport, it's a team sport. And that's what matters most at the end of the day is all nine matches count for nationals, um, seven count. So well, At nationals up in Connecticut, you guys came in sef seventh. How are you guys looking to bounce back in Maples? Well, we've been undefeated in Maples for a really long time, so our goal is to finish on top. Uh, we have three seniors that are going into the weekend, and so the goal is to try to help them win each division that they're all in, um, and which all together accumulatively, our points add up, so hopefully everybody ends up first and second throughout each tournament. These girls are eager are ready to compete at Maple Championships this Saturday. From the Seaman Lawson Johnson squash courts, I'm Kwabano Champong. Back to you, Gael. Thank you, Kobe. Competitive rock climbing was offered for the first time this year as a winter athletic option. Our news correspondent, Annie Haight, had a chance to visit and interview members of the team. Thanks, Gael. I'm here at Rockville with Lawrenceville's first competitive climbing team and their coach, Mr. Hannawald, to see what their seasons come out to. So, Alvaro, what does a typical practice look like? Um, so, first, we meet, meet in Irwin and then we come here. It's like a 10 minute drive, and then after that, we boulder in that part of the, of the gym where we climb not really high from the ground um, without harnesses and practice or move slowly, and after that, we just put our harnesses and start climbing for the rest of the time we're here. Um, what's the hardest part of climbing, LA? I'd say that the hardest part of climbing are probably the last few moves, because you're really tired, but you have to just push through the pain and get to the top. And what's your favorite part? My favorite part would probably be doing something I enjoy with a group of fun people. So, Mr. Hanawald, the climbing team is a new addition to Winter Athletics. Um, tell us a little bit about um, where the idea for climbing came from and how it's affecting the outdoors program. Okay. Uh, well, we're kind of limited by where we are. Um, in New Jersey, winter program, we don't have the snow, uh, so that eliminates your cross-country skiing, your snowshoeing. Uh, hopefully we can get out and do that, but you never know when that's going to happen. Uh, we're kind of limited by where we are just geographically, uh, not so close to the mountains. So the question came, what could we do well? Uh, what could we do that would introduce some great outdoor skills and really advance the students uh, you know, to a higher degree of proficiency? And um, thinking about that, we can climb uh, outdoors in the fall and the spring. We have our own climbing wall, our own ropes course. So if we uh, use Rockville, which is a phenomenal facility, as you can see, um, take that and combine it with a, a I guess a personal passion for climbing, then those things together, it, you know, just made sense. Thank you, Annie. That is our show for Friday, February 17th, 2017. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. From all of us here at L10, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.